So I'm Maureen Lowell. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm licensed in California and in Oregon, but I'm not practicing anywhere right now. Um, I had a private practice from 1997 to 2014, and then I closed my practice because I moved from California to Oregon. Um, so now I teach at San Jose State in the Justice Studies Department, and I teach family violence and community violence and collaborative response to family violence. So right now I'm just an educator, but really have that background of being a psychotherapist as a marriage and family therapist. It's an emergent field, so it lacks definition. And because it is based on the idea that there's a consilience of science that helps us better understand the mind and the nervous system in relationships and how that connects people. It is, it's huge. It's too big to say, well, okay, then what is interpersonal neurobiology? It's any science that contributes to that, those ideas of the mind and brain in relationships. The base of interpersonal neurobiology, there's systems thinking, which there isn't any single part that can define the outcome of the system as a whole. It's kind of like my experience of minds in a consultation group both based on IPNB is that our minds were operating at a different level. And that's what happens in systems is that the parts come together um, in ways that can't be described or predicted by any single part on its, on its own. And so I think that's really fundamental to anything that's interpersonal neurobiology. But then to that, you need to add that there's brain science and it's informed by science. Dan Siegel would say what he most wants is that the field be informed by the science and that it make room for any science that, that relevantly addresses, substantively addresses the brain and the mind in relationships. And then you get to this idea of mind, which is his big thing, Dan Siegel's big thing is like, well, what is the mind? And he kind of, the shortcut of it is it's the flow of information and energy in and between people. So you have to realize that you are really acknowledging the neurobiology, what's happening within the body, but then between people as the neurobiology connects with others through mirror neurons, through body states, through communication, any kind of information or inter or energy that is moving between people and within people. So I think, it's, I think it's the question that will need to be answered as we move you know, into the next 10 years. And I think it'll come, you know, the consilience ideas, what is the common ground for all these questions of what people are in relationship with others based on their neurobiology um, and what they contribute to others. It's, that's the science that'll keep, I think, um, building. And I, I think that answer will be clear in the years to come, but I think the simple answer is that it's based on systems and it is the integration uh, of brain, mind, and relationships and kind of that mutual web it creates. Um, I would say it, it didn't just impact me, it transformed me. Because once you start to hear what interpersonal neurobiology brings to your, you know, to your awareness, to your knowledge base, it completely transforms the way you work with information and the information you work with. So how did, how did it transform me um, is that it changed the way I worked with clients, you know, probably most tangibly, uh, that I approached it from helping them understand uh, their brains and their nervous systems. And I was working in trauma. So this was a big relief for, for clients to see that there was language to help them make sense out of what their bodies were doing to them and how it was impacting relationships and um, being able to tie the experience of trauma with understanding their minds and their brains and their bodies was, was really, um, you know, it was, it freed them. It was liberating. They no longer felt like they had betrayed themselves. So in my practice, it allowed me a language and a connection with my clients um, that was quite unique. And I've been working in family violence since the mid eighties, working with people who are the violent partner or the violent parents since the early nineties. To be able to approach that side of it as well as the victim side of it with equal compassion and understanding, I think was really engaging for my clients. I suspect they felt a difference in me 
uh, in just being able to be present to them fully. I didn't have to approach them with a diagnosis anymore. I could approach them with an understanding and in a collaborative relationship. So I would say, you know, just as a practice, because that's why I started studying it was for my clients. Um, that was the first transformation. But after that, to recognize that it was taking on a personal transformation to now, you know, that there's meditation in, you know, my life as a practice, that there's mindfulness in my activities from, you know, hiking to walking to taking a break. Um, there's, um, uh, I now do writing practice as a way to stay committed to both the work in the field, but also just in a way of integrating the information in a, a writing and doing that in a writing group. So, you know, just appreciating the importance of um, colleague collaboration. Um, one of the other really powerful things that happened after some work, I, I did a weekend with Dan Siegel and I came back and I was like, I need to have a consultation group that is interpersonal neurobiology. And that probably was a single most important step in my transformation was getting with a consultation group of therapists um, that was based on interpersonal neurobiology. So while our clients were different, one woman worked with death row inmates, one woman worked with transgender clients, one woman worked with young children, um, I worked with family violence, even though we were coming at different client groups, we all had a common language of interpersonal neurobiology. And the work that we did together was transformative. I mean, there was just a power of, of our minds that went to a new dimension that I, you know, I couldn't explain to anybody else who hadn't experienced it. It's just having the kind of compassion and understanding and openness um, as a part of the process of helping each other consult on cases, it just, you know, it's kind of like the minds come to a whole nother dimension. It was really great. So the simple answer is that interpersonal neuro neurobiology has transformed, you know, me personally and professionally at, at, you know, in ways that I can't even fully appreciate probably. So there's probably not a group that I would say it couldn't be relevant to. It does come with a need to be open to the information. So if it turns somebody off and they think, wow, what is this weird stuff people are talking about? You know, then maybe they won't be open to it. But aside from people just not being interested, I would say it is relevant to everyone, which may sound like a cop-out answer, but it is so relevant to so many people in so many professions. You know, I guess if I had to highlight them, it would be people who are in education, people who are in medical, people who are in therapy, and uh, people are in human services. Uh, so I think, you know, if, if we could start there, maybe that'd be a good place. <laughs>